Hi, I'm Timothy Brusella, and today I want to work an example of solving a system of linear equations using uh, the Gauss-Chardon method. Recall uh, that when using the Gauss-Chardon method, we have to get the matrix in reduced echelon form, and here are the conditions for uh, reduced echelon form. The first non-zero number in each row has to be a 1. That's not saying the first number in each row is a 1, but the first number that's not a 0 has to be a 1, and that 1 is called the leading 1. Uh, the second condition, any number in the same column as a leading 1 has to be a 0. So if you have a leading 1 in a column, then above and below it, all those numbers have to be zero and each leading one is to the right of the leading one in the previous row that means that the leading ones are falling from left to right and finally uh, any rows containing all zeros are below the rows containing non-zero values that's not saying the last row is all zeros that's saying that if there's a uh, uh, row of all zeros, it has to be down there at the bottom of the matrix. And to get the matrix in reduced echelon form, we have three elementary row operations we're going to be using. We'll multiply or divide all the numbers in a row by non-zero constant. That's the, one, that's the operation we use most frequently to get a leading one. And uh, uh, the second one, add a multiple of a row containing a leading one to another row to yield a new row. This is the operation we'll use most frequently because if a matrix is in reduced echelon form, then the most common number in it should be zero. And this is the one that we'll use to zero out the column. That second operation is what we use to get zeros. And the third uh, operation, you can any change any two, interchange any two rows, just like you can interchange any two equations. The order of which the equations are written uh, doesn't uh, impact the final solution. Likewise, the order in which the uh, uh, rows are written doesn't impact the solution. I would use this one to get the zeros down at the bottom. You can also use it to get a leading one if you see that there's a row, uh, one uh, below the where you're trying to get a leading one uh, you could try interchanging and here's the system we're going to solve uh, use uh, uh, use gauss jordan elimination to solve the system and I'll get us started I'll make my augmented matrix notice by the way I already have the like variables aligned x y and z are all aligned so we have the coefficients of x, the coefficients of y, that's a positive 1 and a positive 1, the coefficients of z, 4, negative 3, 4. To indicate that we're moving to the other side of the equal sign, I'll put a vertical bar, and then my column of constants, 20, negative 2, and negative 5. The first number that needs to be, uh, that's not a zero, needs to be a one. So that four there needs to be a one. So we'll say, we ask ourselves, what should we divide that number by, multiply or divide that number by to give us a leading one? Well, four. So I'm going to say row one divided by four, that's the same thing as multiplied by uh, one fourth, gives me a new row one. So row one. The values in row 1 are now changing. We divide by 4, divide by 4. I'm going to skip a space there just so these matrices aren't so close together. That will give us a 1, 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 20 divided by 4 is a positive 5. Realize the other two rows are staying the same in this cycle. And I'll alternate the color of the brackets in each, uh, in each. Oh, the motion sensor there. Okay, yeah, this room has a motion sensor. And if I'm not moving around enough, they'll turn out the lights on me. So we've recopied the uh, second and third row. We now have a leading one where we need it. Here's our leading one. There's the leading one. 
we need, we need to use that leading one to zero out the column. And that's the operation I said we'd use most frequently. This here, add a multiple of a row containing a leading one to another row to yield a new row. So the row that has a leading one, we're going to multiply it by something so that when we add it to positive two, it gives me a zero. Well, what would this one need to be? So when I added it to positive two, it would give me a zero. Well, it needs to be a negative two. So I'm going to say negative two times row one plus row two gives me a new row two. What would this number need to be here? So when I added it to three, it would give me a zero. It needs to be a negative three. So I'll say negative three times row one plus row three gives me a new row three. Realize in this cycle, row one is not changing. Row one is going to stay a one, two, one, and five. And this is where you'll see how good your mental arithmetic is. Here we go. We start multiplying. You multiply by negative two and add it to positive two. One times negative two is a negative two, plus two gives me a zero. Multiply by a negative 2, that'll be a negative 4, plus 1 is a negative 3. Multiply by a negative 2, that'll be a 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2, plus negative 3 is a negative 5. Multiply by negative 2, that's a negative 10, plus negative 2 is a negative 12. Let me push this up some there. Now we do the same thing with rows 1 and 3, but we're multiplying by negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is a negative 3 plus 3. That gives me the 0 I needed. Multiply by negative 3, that's a negative 6. Plus 1 gives me a negative 5. Multiply by negative 3, that'll give me a negative 3. Plus 4, which gives me a positive 1. Multiply by negative 3, that's a negative 15 plus a negative 5, that gives me a negative 20. We got a leading 1 in the first row, we then zeroed out the column. We move down to the second row. The first number there that's not 0 needs to be a 1. So that negative 3 there needs to be a 0. If I had a 1 underneath the negative 3, I could interchange rows 2 and 3. That's why I said that you can sometimes interchange rows in order to get a leading 1, but we don't. So this negative 3 here, we need to change that. That negative 3 needs to be changed to a positive 1. Remember how we do that. To change the 4 to a 1, we divided it by 4. To change a negative 3, we're going to divide by negative 3. I'll say row 2 divided by negative 3 gives me a new row 2. That's dividing by negative 3 is the same thing as multiplying by a negative 1 third. So... Realize that row 1 is being recopied. It's not changing. Row 3 isn't changing. Row 2 is the one that's changing. 0 divided by negative 3 stays as 0. Negative 1 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 1. Negative 5 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 5 thirds. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive. Well, that works out nice. It's an integer. But, yeah, you're going to be stuck with fractions, okay? Yes, you will have fractions. And the problems in my math lab, the way the numbers are generated algorithmically, yeah, you could get some really messy fractions in some of those problems. So you'll have to be careful. We now have a leading 1 in row 2. We use that leading one to zero out the column. So we ask ourselves, what does this number need to be so when I add it to positive two, it'll give me a zero? And I say that it'll be a, it needs to be a negative two. So I'll say once again that was the uh, the uh, uh, 
motion sensor, it seems like it's cutting off even faster today. So negative 2 times row 2 plus row 1 gives me a new row 1. What does this 1 need to be so when I add it to negative 5 it gives me a 0? Well, it needs to be a positive 5, so I'll say 5 times row 2 plus row 3 gives me a new row 3. So, we're still working with this problem here. I'm going to go to a new sheet of paper. I'm going to pick up... Well, actually, I guess I have room right here to write the next... Uh, matrix. Yeah, I think I have room right here. So I'll just continue on. I'll write my brackets. And realize row 2 is being recopied. Row 2 is not changing in this cycle. Multiply by negative 2 and add it. 0 times negative 2 stays a 0, plus 1 is just a 1. Multiply by negative 2. That'll give me a negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Multiply by negative 2. 5 thirds times negative 2. 5 thirds times negative 2 is a negative 10 thirds, plus 3 thirds. That gives me a negative 7 thirds. Multiply by negative 2. That gives me a negative 8 plus 5. Negative 8 plus 5 gives me a negative 3. Now multiply row 2 by positive 5 and add it to row 3. Notice that the columns in which we have a leading 1 and then we've zeroed out the remaining values, notice they're not changing. And if you follow this pattern, get the leading 1 on the left, zero out the column, move on to the next row, get the leading one, zero out the column. If you follow that pattern that I'm using, you'll never wind up undoing the work you've already done. So multiply by five and add it, that stays a zero. Multiply by five and add it, that becomes a zero. Multiply by five. Oh, five thirds times five, that's 25 thirds plus one. 25 thirds plus three thirds gives me 28 thirds. Multiply by 5 and add it. Oh, that's going to uh, work out nicely. 20 plus a negative 20, that gives me a 0. We move down to uh, the third row. We're ready to get a leading 1. The first number that's not a 0 needs to be a 1. Well, that's the 28 thirds. Notice in the past, if I'm trying to change an integer to a 1, I just divide by that integer. When I'm trying to change an integer to a 1, I just divide by it. But if it's a fraction I'm trying to change to 1, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing. So I'll say 3 28 times row 3 gives me a new row 3. Now I'll move on to my new sheet of paper right here. And... The only row that's changing in this case is row 1. Row, uh, row 1 is changing. We'll have a 0, 0. 28 thirds times 3 28 becomes a 1. And multiply 3 28 by 0. That's nice. It stays a 0. And we're recopying rows 2 and, uh, two and 1. there. So now we'll use this one. We need to zero out the column. Using this one there, we're going to zero out the column and we ask ourselves, let me move that. We ask ourselves, what does this one need to be? So when we add it to negative seven thirds, we get a zero. It should uh, you should have noticed by now that what you multiply by before you adding is the same number part but with opposite signs. You'll be multiplying by the additive inverse in both uh, uh, whenever you're trying to introduce those zeros. Whenever you're trying to zero out the column, 
So that needs to be a positive 7 thirds. So positive 7 thirds times row 3 plus row 1 gives me a new row 1. What does this 1 need to be? So when I add it to positive 5 thirds, it gives me a 0. Well, it needs to be a negative 5 thirds times row 3 plus row 2 gives me a new row 2. Notice we don't have another row to go down to and get a leading one, so this should be the last uh, cycle. So row 3 is being recopied. Row 3 is not changing. And Here we go. We're going to multiply all of those numbers by 7 thirds and add it to row 1. Well, it couldn't get much nicer. 0 times 7 thirds is 0, plus 1 stays a 1. 0 times 7 thirds is still 0, plus 0 stays a 0. Multiply by 7 thirds, that gives me a positive 7 thirds. Add it to negative 7 thirds, that gives me the 0 I needed. Multiply by 7 thirds and add it, and look at that, that stays in negative 3. Next, multiply by, we're performing this uh, negative 5 thirds row 3 plus row 2 gives me a new row 2. Multiply by negative 5 thirds and add it. Multiply by negative 5 thirds and add it. Multiply by negative 5 thirds and add it. Multiply by negative 5 thirds, that's going to stay as 0, add it to 4. As I said, it couldn't give us a, a nicer, uh, uh, this last series of operations couldn't be easier. Remember how we identified the uh, columns. This first column had all the coefficients of x. The second column had all the coefficients of y. The third column had the coefficients of z. So, this first row says 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to negative 3. When we clean that up, the x is, I mean the y and z's are gone. Really that first row is just saying that x equals negative 3. Well, if x is negative 3, apply, notice, really, you just go to the, uh, locate the 1, move across. 1x is negative 3. Applying that same logic, 1y equals positive 4. 1z is equal to 0. So we had the solution. It's an ordered triple. x is negative 3, y is positive 4, and z is 0. So, there's the problem we started with, and here's the work we did, showing each, showing each step, doing it by hand, and we wind up with the solution, negative 3, 4, 0. Okay, I hope this has helped you uh, see the pattern for... Uh, uh, reducing or solving systems of equations using Gaussian elimination. You multiply or divide to get the one. Then you use that one to zero out the column. Move down to the next one. Multiply or divide to get a leading one. Then use that one to zero out the column. Multiply or divide to get a leading one. And use that one to zero out the column. And if there's a unique solution, these numbers on the right-hand side will turn out to be the solution to the system. Okay, this is Timothy Brisella. Bye-bye.